Jimi Hendrix, aside from being a pioneer of his time in the Macron pastry making field, was also a pretty good guitar player. So today we're going to talk about some of the amazing rhythm guitar things that Jimi was famous for. Super slapped on just as a rhythm guitar player. Solos, riff, everything is great, but rhythm specifically is what we're going to talk about today. And one of the examples we're going to use just in the style, it's not like an actual song, but just in the style of how he kind of played it, is going to sound something like this. <laughs> So again, there's just a couple different major chord things, a couple different minor chord things, but we're going to start out with what I think is like the most famous one that I think of when I think of his playing, the... Right? Something like that. Okay, this is just going to be over in A major chord, A7, however you want to look at it. We're also going to incorporate some real life examples of uh, songs that he did, but we're going to start with this one right here, right in the middle of the neck, Okay. So I think that the important thing to think about that might make you think of how it sounds is to think of bookending just a segment of time with the root note of the chord. What I mean by that is we're going to start on an A and we're going to end on an A, okay? Whatever happens in between is fair game. So we're going to strike this A note on the E string, the fifth fret, and then we're going to get a kind of like a one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, okay? So we're thinking about two bars here. Strike that A string, and then I'm getting like a, the triad of the chord buried inside here. Again, the whole thing is really a triad most of the time, but I've got 70, 65, B, right? And I'm just hitting it, and then quitting it. Huh? So one, two, and three. So once I kind of get into that spot, that's the announcement of the chord. Now we're going to start some of these famous Hendrixy inflections, all right? The easiest way to do it is just see that chord right there. One of the, the most telling things about this style of playing is the use of double stops within bigger chords. Double stop is just when you play two notes at a time, okay? So that's the, the secret of the rhythmic guitar part of it because you're kind of playing lead, but since you're, you're really pairing every single lead note with another note, i.e. double stops, it works well for rhythm guitar, okay? So that's why it's like a secret to the rhythm guitar component of it, right? So what I'm doing melodically is... I'm just getting the 6th fret on the G string and getting a hammer on to the 7th fret. Again, usually I'm doing it with my pinky. Like that. So, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. That's what the single note lead is, but then when you add the string behind it, you kind of get a little bit more of that breakup, right? And one of the cool reasons that uh, it sounds like this, how it sounds clean, when you kind of hit the single notes, but is the pedal I'm using. So I'm using a Pedal Pawn Fuzz Pedal. Okay, this is the first time I've ever used anything from Pedal Pawn. Really cool company out of England. Super simple. It's just on, off, volume, and fuzz. So right now the fuzz is set to pretty low. At the end of the video, I'll, I'll really dime out the fuzz just so you can kind of hear the full breadth of this pedal. But the dynamics of how you play and where your volume knob is set and how you set the volume and fuzz on there really kind of give this a, a total array of different tones and stuff that you can get. So I really like having the volume kind of cranked up and the fuzz up, just real quick, without the pedal even on. Sounds just like a regular strap, but then it really kind of... really beefs up the sound just by just kind of adding that real quick thing. So thank you to Pedal Pond for sponsoring the video. But let's get back to it, right? So we've got that... That little lead thing that we're just adding the string behind it, right? So when I do this, I'm really striking the G and the B strings at the same time. Which I remember looking at my first Hendrix tab and being like, oh my gosh, there are so many different things. Because if you were to tab this out, it'd be like, okay, five E, X, X across the strings for a muted down up. 
then you have seven, six, and five in a line, then a then a, a hammer on from six to seven, and then six G and five B, and then seven G and five. And it's like, oh my gosh, if you just read it like that, it's so difficult to see. But really when you just see it is this A chord and then just kind of double stopping through this A major with this hammer on, you're halfway there, right? So again, what we're doing is we're outlining the chord and you'll notice that on the end of this, one, two, and three, four, and one, and two, and three, and four, where do I end? Right here, seven on the D string. This is also an A. So I'm beginning with a low A. I work my way through the chord and I end on the octave A. So we've kind of gone on this little journey all within the space of one chord's spot in a progression, which is really the beauty and the genius of Jimi Hendrix, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four. chord it's going to be like an E7 E major a lot of the same principles but now we're doing it in a different spot okay so I'm going to an open E7 spot which is open E 2A open D 1G now if we were to think about this in the same way we thought about this right we did the what it would be here it'd be the Okay, the first fret to the second fret on the G string and end on 2D, which is the octave E. Okay, so. You could do something like that, but that's a little bit too on the nose. That's exactly what happened in the first chord. One, uh, one of the hallmarks of his playing is so much variety. He never plays it the same way twice. That's why the live stuff is so cool to watch because it's like, wow, this is a totally different interpretation of his own song that only he could do, right? So what we're going to do on this E7 part, we're going to do something like this, okay? Now, basically what we're doing is we're going into the next voicing of an E major, which maybe I'm thinking of as just, you know, here's that octave E, which is where we would have ended on the... But on the A string, so the ninth fret, right? So if we have the chord here, this is just a regular E major chord that maybe you've seen before, bar chord, A string rooted, 7A, 999 on the D, G, and B strings. But the way that we're gonna get into this chord is something like this, all right? So we're gonna also uh, come across this in the D major part, but what we have here is the root note is on the A string. Now one thing that he likes to use a lot is using the fifth below, right? So if this is our root note in a chord, the note right below it on the E string is going to be its fifth, like a power chord. And especially on like a single coil guitar strap, this is the uh, ultra strap by the way, it really thickens the sound just by adding that fifth below but still keeps the tone. One great example of this is... Right, so it's going to be the same idea of that, where basically we're just using the fifth below to lead us into the chord part, right? So I'm starting with that E7. I know that my target spot is going to be 7 on the A string. That's where this chord exists, but... this little hammer on type thing below root five so another double stop where I'm getting 7a and 7e and then I'm hammering getting that fuzz amazing right so on the ninth fret of the E string now the cool thing about this move is if you do this and then go down a string now we're getting into the Hendrix money zone, as I like to call it, right? Just like the, the taste of that fine red velvet macron. And uh, we're gonna do the same thing. So hammer on, hammer on, again, same thing. And then this little kind of pentatonic run into a major chord. So if I'm just gonna do the single notes, I think the best thing to do is to learn it as a single note 
riff or lick and then add the double stop after. So we've got 7, 9, E, 7, 9, A, 11, A, 9, 11 on the D string, right? Which if we were gonna play, that would be kind of like a pentatonic arpeggio line off of an E. So that's gonna be really our E major thing that we're doing in between announcing and leaving that E7 chord. Now, when we add the double stop, it kind of sounds a little bit more like something you could use in a rhythm guitar sense. So, again, E and A at the same time. Now A and D at the same time. Now I'm gonna take this shape and basically just slide, slide it two frets higher and then get D and G at the same time. 9-11. Okay, so after that, E7. And that's basically just an E major chord. On to the next chord. Okay, this is going to be an F sharp minor 7. So this is the first minor chord that we've encountered, okay? Like I said, announcing the chord and outlining it at the beginning is a very important part of what you want to do. So the second fret on the low E string is going to be our root note. What we're going to do is we're going to slide. Now again, if you want to be more like him, you know, you could use your thumb. Again, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really a huge thumb player. I, to each his own, his or her own, right? I'm going to slide one to two and then get the F sharp minor seven chord voicing, which is just the second fret, skip the A string, right? And then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. Again, those are the single note lines. Two to four, two to four G, back, and note where I end up, the fourth fret of the D string, which is the octave of the F sharp. So F sharp. And then we end there to kind of close that section. After that. D major, okay? So far, so far we have two major chords and one minor chord. Uh, A. E7. fourth chord of this progression is going to be D major, all right? Now, aside from just always announcing the root note, a lot of times he'll have a lot of play in how he gets into the next section to do most of the double stop inflections, all right? So what I mean by that is like... Something like that. And this is kind of like one of my... One of my favorite things about his playing is like this kind of playful nature between the root and the chord. Something like that. It's like a root. I, and it's, it sounds so cool and it's such a signature thing of his, right? So again, I'm announcing the D and then I'm getting two quick hits of the chord, the D major chord. So 5E e, and then the chord is a 7 G and B, right? And then sometimes something like that, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm seeing this next shape, much like you did with the E chord, where here's what, you don't even have to play it like this, but think of this shape where it's like five, A, then seven, 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 and then think of getting into the next position of the seventh fret being like the left part, the back part of where your finger starts to do the, the little inflections, right? So, all right, so I'm getting the chord, and then this next move, 5A to 7A to 9A is setting my pointer finger up in the spot where I want it to be to do the, those kind of symmetrical two fret uh, interval uh, double stops. 
that we just did in the other ones, right? In fact, if we just had like a D major to an E major thing, we could go D. E major. It's really just kind of like that little play in between the root note. Now, one cool thing about uh, this spot is uh, a lot of times when maybe beginners first play this chord, they forget that the high E string is also in there. So it's not just 5A777, seven, 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 that A on top is also fair game in this chord. Right? That's where you have to kind of like raise your bar up to get that. But what's important to note is this note exists from this shape on the 10th fret, right? So remember, once we did this, we've got, we, this part is easy to remember because it's the same notes, right? It's just seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. The B string be seven, 10. The 10th fret on the B string is the same as the fifth fret on the high E string. So one cool thing about maybe going backwards is maybe a little look like that where you get that hammer on, that hammer on pull off, and do, and then again it's double stops. You can kind of add that in there, right? So it's really just about getting yourself into a spot to be creative with, right? So again, let's do the whole thing again, starting on an A. E. F sharp. Awesome, awesome stuff. And then if you want to get into like that lead, like that really like hitting those like nasty Hendrix licks, dude, just take this pedal, turn the fuzz way off. <laughs> oh man. And it really changes the thing. So again, this is a really cool virtual pedal because you can do like those kind of like... really thickens up everything in uh, a lot of different genres again that wasn't so much of like a, a hendrix type thing but thank you to pedal pond for sponsoring this video let me know if you have any questions or like a follow-up video on specific techniques because i love talking about hendrix stuff just because it makes me like learn more hendrix stuff and it's something that i really like to to do and to play so thank you again pedal pond sponsor the video thank you for watching if you have any questions hit me in the comment section instagram or the website i'll talk to you all soon